guys welcome to my channel my name is Loxy and today I'll be going through three main ways to clear an allotment when you get an allotment you might be lucky like me and get a tidyish one or you might get one that needs a lot of work doing to it like the first one that I had in any case you have three main ways to clear an allotment number one tilling number two using a heavy duty ground sheet and number three going no dig so let's go through all of them in detail so that you can decide what's best for you number one tilling now that has been used for a very long time by uh, many people owning allotments but what does tilling do that basically means digging up and breaking up the ground you'd either have to use a shovel to dig it down or you'd have to hire or borrow a rotavator. Now you can, might decide to do the whole allotment or you might decide to do separate beds. Either way, doing that will reduce the quality of the soil. It introduces oxygen in the inside of it. And basically, in not so many words, it doesn't retain water as well so you'd have to water your vegetables a lot more often digging up the soil also means digging up and bringing up to the surface all of the weed seeds that have been stored for many years so you have to decide whether weeding is something that you really want to do the second way to clean allotment is using a heavy woven ground sheet so i just want to show you something in my allotment this is what it is okay can you see rainwater can run through it into the ground below but what happens when you use it nothing is a hundred percent you will get weeds coming through as you can see here look the roots have grown into it through it so actually when you do weeding you can't just pull them out and that's quite irritating in saying that, if you still decide to use it, then this is what you need to do. You need to dig up the ground and leave it for at least a couple of days to settle. You'd have to place the sheet on the top of the ground um, and secure it down with U-shaped nails. Now, to plant into it, you'd have to cut holes or burn holes into it. Now, you have to remember this is a rowing sheet. So if you are going to be cutting into it, then it may um, break up a little bit okay now if you use something hot you could melt the plastic instead and that would uh, preserve it for a, lo a lot longer now something like that would last maybe about five years but if you do leave soil on top of it weeds will grow on it and through it now the third and last way to clear uh, an overgrown garden would be to do no dig now there's several options for that you can combine them or you could just you choose one or the other. Number one, so Charles Downing aims to um, save the soil basically. It keeps the structure of the soil and makes your plants grow a lot better than if you would do when you're tilling. Now, how would you do it the Charles Downing way? Number one, you'd have to cut down all the grass down to ground level which is much better than having to dig it, of course. Number two, you'd have to lay down cardboard overlapping by about six inches on anywhere where it's cut because as soon as there's any type of light coming through, the weeds will go through. You'd have to wet it quite well and then place your soil on the top. You'd need about six inches um, or maybe up to about 15 centimeters of soil and then you can plant directly in. What happens to the cardboard? Well, it's a natural material, so it will just disintegrate uh, by degrade in the soil. The worms love it. So they would come to the top and obviously where worms are, that's much better growing conditions for the plants. But then there's also the Paul Gouch's way and he's created something that's called the back to Eden method. So here, what he asks you to do is place down um, maybe about six sheets of newspaper or you could use contractor's paper or you could use cardboard again and you'd put about six inches of wood chip down 
What that does, it preserves the soil, same as Charles Downing. It also feeds the soil, so you wouldn't have to use much fertilizer. You could plant your perennials, such as currants, any uh, fruit trees or anything like that. You'd have to move the wood chips out of the way and plant directly into the soil and then bring the wood chips around. What that really does is retains the moisture. Now, if you do decide to plant seeds and things, this isn't a growing medium. So I will show you. These are the wood chips. Now, you can't, the seeds wouldn't grow in them. So what you do need to do is make beds out of uh, compost, soil, anything like that. It's quite important because if you plant directly into here, not much is gonna grow. You don't want the park or the really thick wood chips. What you want is the ones they tend to want to get rid of for free. Um, so there are leaves in here, there are small um, bits of wood, anything like that, it rots down a lot quicker. It improves the quality of the soil. Now in my area, there's a lot of clay soil and it's really hard to dig into and it's really hard to plant into. But you can see here, this wood chip has been down for maybe about a year. Shall we have a look? Look at how lovely and black this soil is. Look. So it hasn't rained for a few days and it stays. This is what feeds the plants. This is what is so good to grow in. All you would have to do is every year top the wood chips up. It doesn't have to be expensive. You could call around to all the tree specialists and ask if they are working in your area. A lot of the time they would have to pay to get rid of them. So you might be thinking, which way am I going to do my allotment? And I think it's quite clear from all the different ways I've taken you through. My way would definitely be no dig. So I'll have to clear all this and I'll want to mix them up a little bit. So I might want to do some of Paul Gauchy's wood chips. And what I'll also want to do is uh, no dig. So using Charles Downing. I think you don't have to stick to one method. You have to test it out. People will say to me that there will be a nitrogen depletion in the ground. Well, I say, actually, if you do it properly, you won't. The only way how you get nitrogen depletion in the ground is if you dig it over with the wood chips in. You should never ever mix wood chips and soil together. The wood chips should only stay on top and be topped up every single year. So what I will do next is clear all this and I'll make a video about how I do it. I will even out the ground that's sloping on the end and I will do no dig. That's it you guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you can please share, subscribe and like and obviously leave a comment as well. I would really appreciate it.